Hi class, this video is going to help you with the homework six on um, the video or the problems 22 through 25. This is going to help you with calculating your mean, median, mode, and finding the range. So the problem I'm looking at here is number 24, and I'm going to go ahead and add the range onto this. So we can go ahead and do all of the um, operations for 22 through 25 in one um, problem. Okay, so we have a sightseeing trip has a capacity of 55 people each day two officials record the number of people making the trip the data for a selection of nine summer days are as follows okay so we have our data here and then we want to find the median the mean and then the mode if they have any and how many they have okay so first thing we're going to do oh in the range can't forget about the range so the first thing we're always going to do when we do this is we're going to sort the data. We can do this by hand, and I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how you could do this in Alex. So I'm going to switch over to Alex here. Okay, so this is the problem in Alex. So as you can see, we have it. I don't have the part D I added in, but we have the rest of the problem here. Okay, so what we can do when you sort the data is you can use the send data to calculator. If you click on that, it will open the calculator with all your data in it. So let me do it again, just like that. So here my data is in there, starts at 40, 44, 33, 31, so on to 54. This is already highlighted. If it's not highlighted, you'll wanna go ahead and highlight it. So it looks like this. So once you have it in your calculator, you can hit this sort button and it will sort all the values for you. So if I hit this, and then there it has put my values in order. So let me do that again. Let me clear out my calculator. I'll close out of it. I click send data to calculator. It'll appear there, it should be highlighted blue. So then once it opens the calculator, you hit sort and it will put them all in order for you. So you can do this by hand or you can use your calculator. This send data to calculator is not going to be present on every problem. So you will have to do some sorting by hand. Um, but I did want to show you guys that. So if you don't want to have to sort every problem, you don't have to. All right, so then I'm going to write these down and we'll go back to working out the problem. All right, so I have our data here. We are, all, we are all sorted. We have lowest to greatest. Notice that 44 is repeated three times and I did write it in our list with that repetition. So we wanna make sure we do that, write out all the numbers as you see them. And so we have our list sorted here. And then the calculator, this is what it should look like in your calculator. So if you do it by hand, do it on that calculator, this is what it should look like. Okay, so the mean, median and mode. So we're gonna start by calculating the median, that's part A. The median of the data means the middle of the data. So that means once we have our data in order from least to greatest, we're gonna chop off numbers on the outside until we find the number directly in the middle of our data. So the way I've always done this is I would get out a different colored pen or I get out some system and I'm just gonna start chipping away. I want to make sure I chip away the even numbers from each end. So right now I have three on each end. I'll go on four on each end. So an equal number on each end, that leaves me with 44 in the middle. So 44 would be my median. So my median here is 44 for this problem. So it's 44. It's the data in the middle. It's 44. Okay, so... When you have an odd number of data points like this, so we have nine data nine data points here, we're gonna get a single value in the middle. But let's work through a hypothetical. Okay, so let's go down here. Let's work through some other data. I'm gonna do something short. Um, let's say you sorted your data. You have nine, 10, 13, or let's do 12. Nine, 10, 12, 14. Okay, so you have this other set of data you're asked to find the median, okay? So just another set just to go through kind of what ifs. So you go through this, you start the same way. You have them listed least to greatest, you start chipping away at the outsides. And then you get to the middle and you notice you have two points in the middle here and you don't have one in the middle. We have two, there is no number here 
in the middle. Our middle is in between 10 and 12. So before we had one single number that ended up in the middle, but here we're between two different numbers in the middle. So we can't just have no median. We're always gonna have a median. So if you get to um, a point like this, this is when you have an even number of data points, you're gonna get two numbers that are directly in the middle of your data. So when you find the median and you get to an example like this, the way to continue is to take those two numbers, add them together, divide by two. And this is how you would find your median. So I take 10 plus 12, gives me 22 over two, which would then give me a median of 11. Okay, so that's a what if. So for our problem here that we have above, our median is 44. 44 was the value that was directly in the middle of our data when we listed it from least to greatest. If you do not have one single value in the middle of your data, if you have two, that is when you're gonna add them together and divide by two. And that's how you find your median. Okay, so now I'm gonna erase this because this is not going to pertain to the problem we're looking at on the screen, but that could possibly appear in your problem you're seeing. There are different um, problems you can see throughout the homework. So if you get an even number of data sets, you're gonna come across that. Okay. And then let's go ahead and erase all my crossing off. So then we can have a fresh set of data points for the next problem. So this is when, if you're doing this on paper, using pen and pencil is very helpful here. So writing out your data points in order in pen and then crossing them out in pencil. So you can go back, erase your pencil and still have your pen writing there. Okay, so let's go into the mean. So part B. All right, the mean of our data is the average of our data. Mean and average are the same thing, different words to define them. To find the mean of our data, you're gonna add up all of the numbers you have. They don't have to be in order for the mean. So the mean is an exception. They don't have to be in order. You're gonna add them all up. You're gonna divide by the total number of data points we have. So the way this would look, so my mean, we notate that with X bar. That's one way to write out the mean. You are going to take that 31 plus 33 plus 35 plus 40 plus 44 three times. We have it listed three times in our list. Plus 54 and then plus 55. You're going to add all of those up and you're going to divide by how many we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, divide by nine. When you do this calculation, make sure you add everything in the numerator first and then divide by the denominator. So when you add all of this up, we should get 380 divided by nine. And then we get 42.2 repeating. There's a decimal point. And then says, what is the mean of the data set? If your answer is not an integer, it's not an integer because we got decimal points, round to one decimal. So we'll round to 42.2. This is our mean. This is, if you watch the standard deviation video, this is the very first step in your standard deviation calculation. So 42.2. Okay, median, middle of your data, mode. Sorry, median is the middle of your data. Mean is the average. Mode is how many data point or which data point is represented the most and is it the only one? Okay, so a mode happens when you have a number that is going to be represented multiple times throughout your data. When we have this happening, we could have more than one mode. The mode is going to be the one with the highest times it is represented. So if you have in our data, like we have 44 represented three times, that's mode because it's represented multiple times throughout our data. It's the only number that's represented multiple times throughout our data. So when you're looking for your mode, for your mode, you want to look for the repetition. So we have 44, 44, 44. That is the number that is listed multiple times. It is the only number that is listed multiple times. So we would have one mode, and it would be 44. 
So you choose one mode and then you'd put a number of 44. All right, let's work through another hypothetical with the modes. So let's work through an example when you have zero modes and then when you would have two modes, just so we can kind of see how these would work. And then we'll go back and find the ranges. So I'll use a different color. Let me use purple. Okay. Some mode examples. All right, so let's say you get to a data set and you have nine. They're not in order. We don't need them to be in order for the mode. It does help to make them in order for the mode. So we could go ahead and start by reordering this. Um, okay, so we look at our data in order, not in order uh, mode. It is okay to not have it in order, but like I said, it is easier to see the mode if you do have it in order. But we put all of our data in order and there's no repetition. None of our numbers are listed more than once. So this is when you have no mode, no mode. There is no repetition, no repeating of values. Nothing in there is listed more than once. Everything's only listed once, so there is no mode at all. Now, if you had something that was listed twice, you'd have a mode and it'd be that number. Um, if you had something listed three times, like our previous example, you have that mode. Okay, let's say, there's two modes. So let's go over an example of two modes. So let's say we had the data in order. We already sorted it. And we found, this is our data. We have 7, 8, 8, 9, 10, 10, 12, 15. So we go through and we notice, well, 8's repeated. 10 is also repeated. And they're both repeated twice. So they both have the equal number of repetition. And they're both repeated. So this is an example of when we have two modes, two modes, and the modes would be eight and 10, okay? So the mode is going to be the value that is represented multiple times. If you have multiple values represented multiple times, it's going to be the, high, the value with the highest repetition. So it's gonna be the value you see the most. If it's a tie, then we have multiple modes. If there is no value, so if they all are only written once, then you have no mode, okay? So mode refers to the repetition. The repetition, the highest repetition is gonna get our mode. Um, if we have a tie, we list both modes. The, and then if we don't have any repetition, no mode. Okay, so that's mode. All right, last thing we need to do is the range. So let's go back up here. Let's talk about the range. Okay, so going back to our original data, um, please remember the data we were looking at just below. Those were some examples of some other things you could see with mode. Okay, going back to our original data here, how do we find the range? How do we find the range? You find the range by taking the largest number you have minus the smallest number you have. So our range here, we would take 55 minus 31. So let me write this below. Let me get some more room here. So my part D, our range, we are going to take the largest value we have. So this is where we need our list to be in order. The largest value we have is 55 minus the smallest value we have, 31. We're gonna subtract them. That gives us 24. This is our range. All right. So this is how you kind of work through how to get the mean, median, mode, and the range for your data. Very first thing, always sort that data. It's going to be helpful to look at the data in order from least to greatest. After you get done sorting, then work through your different pieces. Make sure you know what you're looking for. Since they're all M's, mean, median, mode, make sure you know the difference between each of them. And then remember that your range is the odd one out because it starts with an R, the range you do the subtraction. All right, guys, I hope this helps. Let me know if you guys have any other questions.